المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي First and foremost, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah. First, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the favors, the bounties it has bestowed upon us. For indeed, alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala getting us here tonight is a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I was uh, honored by requesting the jama'ah, requesting me to be the MC for tonight. So inshallah ta'ala, I will be handling that. And before we get into that, inshallah ta'ala, I just want to mention a few things in public. That tonight, we are going to be listening to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're going to be listening to the beautiful hadith of the name Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And one hadith comes to mind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned hadith. He says, مَجْتَمَعَ قَوْمٌ فِي بَيْتٍ مِنْ بِيُوتِ اللَّهِ يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ the Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that there is not a people except if they are gathered together and they are reciting the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are studying it and contemplating upon it and researching with it and discussing it because that is a beautiful thing of the Quran. This Quran was not only meant to recite but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ do they not contemplate and ponder upon the Qur'an? So Alhamdulillah, Tumma Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us that this night is going to be the night of tadabbur. Tonight is going to be the night of contemplating and understanding. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the understanding tonight and may it benefit us not only in the dunya but in the akhirah. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Inshallah ta'ala what will happen is we'll ask Fadilat al Sheikh, my father, Sheikh Riyad Fattah, the Deputy President of the MJC, uh, that will do the welcoming, inshallah ta'ala, the official welcoming. And then after that, we will proceed with Shaykh Muhammad bin Yahya and Ninawi and Dr. Al Fadil, that he will speak, inshallah ta'ala. And then it will be about for an hour. And then we'll have QA, inshallah ta'ala. And after that, we will conclude, inshallah ta'ala. Barakallahu feeq. Allah be kum amin. Barakallahu بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين اللهم صل وسلم على نبينا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب إشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقرة من لساني يفعو قولي يا رب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته قال سبحانه وتعالى في سورة معروفة الله سبحانه وتعالى says in a very known سورة and a سورة that you are very much familiar with بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خط إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحة وتواسوا بالحق وتواسوا بالصبر we live in the زمان we live in the زمان that people's concentration, the purpose of living on the dunya, seems to have dissipated with someone. Seems to have gone into another direction. But we, we are the Ummah of the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam. We are not just the Ummah of the Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, but we want to tell, and in my welcome, to Sheikh Ninawi, Sheikh, this is an Ummah in Cape Town, Mubarakah. MashaAllah. This Ummah, Allah Ta'ala had given them Barakah since the time in memorial when Allah Ta'ala had sent ulama to this Ummah. Hundreds of years ago, when people thought that they could extinguish the light of the Deen of Islam, Wallahi Allah Ta'ala bi qadrillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah Ta'ala had sent that nur to Cape Town and sent that nur to the Western Cape and so the ulama of the Cape had always put out their hands in searching for knowledge and we have also put our hands as far out and we were saying Ya Allah and Shaykh Muhammad and Ninawi he grabbed our hands 
And he brings that light in the time when we need it. When the world is surrounded, engulfed with fitna, engulfed with fasad, we need sometimes, we need to be taken out of that. And Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, I can safely say so. I can safely say so because I have been in contact with the man. I've heard the man. I've seen the man. I have come and Alhamdulillah, Sheikh, we love you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anybody that brings you close to the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, reminds you of your love and your duty towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, must be a person that is Mubarak. Because that is the objective. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, we take this opportunity and we welcome the Shaykh. And we say, Ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban big That is not something that we say merely from the lip service, but it is something that we mean from our hearts. Because, Sheikh, well, here yeah, many times people say, we've, we've been waiting for Sheikh. When is Sheikh coming? Sheikh is the, and Sahabit Mahmoud, eh, my son, and everybody can, uh, that I've spoken to. Because if somebody lights your heart, with the love of the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam. Wallah, you can't control that. You can't control that. But I ask and I ask myself first. And I ask your honorable selves. When you take knowledge, don't let it become just information. But that knowledge must be enacted. A person can cite the Quran very beautifully. But Allah Ta'ala wants you to understand that Quran. The Nabi Muhammad sallallahu had brought this hadith and had brought all the wisdoms. The Nabi alayhi wants you to enact that in your life. And then you will see the sakina. Then you will see the tranquility come in your life. And I've said many times in the masjid, and we just had Isra wa Mi'raj. Can you imagine that the Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa had gone through seven samawat, seven heavens, and looking from there on top and looking to the dunya, must have said to himself, this dunya is not worth nothing. No, no, no. But it is your connection with Allah. So every step of the way, you make use of the opportunity to bring you closer to Allah Ta'ala. For Wallahi, you don't know. Tomorrow, while you're healthy now, tomorrow you might be sick. Tomorrow you might not be able to. So when you go into Ramadan, then you have prepared yourself with what you have heard. And you can truly say, Ya Rabbi, Allahumma barik lana fi Sha'ban wa balighna Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant to us is a night of enlightenment from our hearts Amen. that is going to bring us closer to the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, reward the sheikh that has gone from so far, come from so far to come here to bring that deen and love for the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam. Reminds about how the Sahaba, those of you that have listened to me on the radio and we've spoken about the Sahaba, how Ridwanullah alayhi have traveled distances to gain knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings the knowledge right on your doorstep. So make use of it. May Allah Ta'ala make us all min al-muttaqeen wa min al-muhsineen wa min ibad al-salihin wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil ala. Amin. جزاك الله خير شيخ مش بالجامل يا شيخ مش بالجامل جزاك الله خير so inshallah, without further ado, we'll ask Sheikh Muhammad bin Yahya Ninawi to proceed inshallah ta'ala. Faliyatafadl mashkur. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina rasulullah. Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa ahbabihi wa azwajihi ajma'in. 
أما بعد فالسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته. I think today I'm especially blessed. I'm not just sitting to one fatah to two. So alhamdulillah, I think the baraka comes from both sides, on this side and this side, and I'm definitely not worthy of all the good words my brother. Shaykh Riyal has mentioned, but that's his good self and he reflects his good essence. May Allah Ta'ala bless him and bless Amen. you and bless all of us in this gathering today where first I want to say, let's do tune-up. So before we start, because we're talking about tazkiyah and usul of usul or usul means how to arrive at or to Allah. And we don't go to Allah Ta'ala with our impurities. So before we even get moving, we need to have our, all, of our, all of us, even for a minute, for a second, not a minute, that we all reflect in ourselves and do tawbah and istighfar to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And then we make niya that we did come for Him so we can be close to Him. Every single one of us, I think that's important for all of us to be on the right sort of track. We're meeting today. Again, I think we've met earlier today a couple of times, but we're meeting again. But our meeting today is on a different Ma'ida. Ma'ida means a uh, table. Usually people invite people to Ma'idas or to a meal. But our meal is Respect for Sheikh, put everybody put them. <laughs> everybody Maybe put, I or, should... or take the what you call it or take off your, your daughter. Put it in flight mode. <laughs> We meet today on the Ma'idah of Dhikr of Allah. There are many people who meet on the Ma'idah of food so they can fill their stomach and they can fill or give, fulfill their hunger. But today we want to meet on the Ma'idah of the Dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And with this Ma'idah of the Dhikr of Allah, which we will be meeting if Allah gives us the opportunity for the next few nights, the Ma'idah of Dhikr is much more colorful and beautiful and nourishing than any food anyone can ever offer. But we don't just meet together tonight on this Ma'idah of the Dhikr of Allah. We also meet with one of the poles or one of the people whom Allah Ta'ala blessed so much to give us glimpses on the path to Allah. And this person is Sayyidi Ahmad ibn Ata'illah al-Sakandari from Alexandria, Egypt, who wrote this small book called Books of Hikam or Wisdom. His name is Ahmad bin Muhammad bin Abdul Karim. And they used to call him also Abu Abbas, nickname that was given to his teacher. So out of his love of his teacher, obviously he took his name as well. Sayyidi Ahmad bin Ata'illah secondary was a student of Abu Abbas al-Mursi. Abu al-Abbas al-Mursi was a student of Abu al-Hasan al-Shadili. Abu al-Hasan al-Shadili was a student of Abd salam bin Mashish, Mawla Abd salam But we're staying with this Ma'idah with Sayyidi Ahmad ibn Ata'illah. And many of the Mashayikh used to say Ahmad ibn Ata'illah was amongst those who were Mashhurun Maghmur. Mashhur means famous. Maghmur means not famous. Contradictory? Maybe. Mashhur with the people of Allah. Known to the people of Allah. Maghmur with the people who, of the dunya. 
Everyone who loves things mention them a lot, right? Don't they say, Man ahabba shay'an akthara dhikrah? Whenever you, mean, you love something, you always talk about it. And that's why if you love the dunya, you always talk about it. You see, for example, the business people, when they meet each other, they talk all, what, how's the business, how's that business, your business is this, this how's business, this business, huh? this, this, this. The people of the Akhirah, when they meet each other, they also talk, I'm preparing, Alhamdulillah, I'm doing better, I'm waiting for Jannah, I'm working for Jannah. I am doing this. Why are you deprived? I'm doing Jannah. Why are you waking up in the middle of the night? I want to go to Jannah. You hear anything? They're in Jannah already. Mentally, they're already in Jannah. There's Ahlul Dunya. And they love the Dunya. And all they talk is Dunya. And there's Ahlul Akhirah. When you meet them, they remind you with the Akhirah. Just like the people of the dunya, when you meet them, if you forgot the dunya, they'll make sure to remind you, where you you've been losing out on the dunya. And when you meet the people of akhirah, they remind you indirectly that you've been losing out on the akhirah. What are you doing? So Sayyid ibn Atayullah was mashhur. He's known to the people of the akhirah. But more important than the people of the dunya, Ahlul Dunya, who are busy with the dunya, and Ahlul Akhirah, who are busy with the Akhirah, there is a third segment. They're called Ahlullah. They're not busy with the dunya, nor are they even busy with the Akhirah. All they're busy with is Allah. They're not preoccupied with the dunya. Nor are they preoccupied with the Akhirah. Not that, that they don't want it. But their over-occupation with Allah Ta'ala made them forget both. And Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala tells us for the Qur'an, gives us an ishara, where he called the Sahaba radiyallahu anhum ajma'in. He says, Minkum man yuridu dunya Some of you want dunya in the ayah. Yurid means want. That's why they say a murid who wants from yurid, from irada. Allah says to the Sahaba, Minkum man yuridu dunya. Some of you want the dunya in this ayah. And then he says, Waminkum man yuridu akhirah. Some of you want the akhirah. <coughs> Look at that. Then Allah Ta'ala takes you in Surah Al-Kahf where he speaks to his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wa Sallam. He says, وَاصْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِيِّ يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهَةِ يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهَةِ They only want him. He didn't say يُرِيدُونَ الدُّنْيَا He didn't say يُرِيدُونَ الْآخِرَةِ He said يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهَةِ all they want is Allah. And that's where an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam told us in hadith al-sahih li akhraju al-imam ibn Hibban Udhkurullah Be, keep in the remembrance of Allah Hatta yuqala majnoon Until it is said the person went senile. We meet with this Imam, Imam of in the, within the people of Allah, of the people of Allah, because he's not telling you about the dunya, nor is he telling you about the akhirah. He's telling you about Allah. So he is mashhur to the people who know, and غير mashhur, maghmur, unknown to the people who don't know. The hikam that we will be spending some time with, and we won't be finishing them, I assure you that. People think tazkiyah, or ihsan, or tasawwuf, is an introductory fiqh book that they can master in a weekend course. Then they wonder what happened. Not realizing that tazkiyah means tarbiyah, and tarbiyah is a lifelong course. Mm. 
the subject of the whole hikam of the book of Sayyid Ibn Atayullah is about tazkiyah. We'll talk about that. What tazkiyah is, let me just introduce him, then I'll jump back to tazkiyah. And this is the first thing he, he, he authored, and it's really a small book. It's a, actually a booklet, not even a book. It's a, very, it's a very small booklet. That's what he did. When he, when Sayyid Ahmad Matalla, Sayyid Ahmad Matalla, when he wrote his book, or the hikam, or wisdom, he took it to his sheikh. He said, Sheikh, would you please look at it? See if you approve mistakes, not mistakes. So he took it to Sayyid Sheikh Abu Abbas al Mursi. He gave it to his Sheikh. Sheikh Abu Abbas, Imam Kabir, he looked at him and he told him after he read it, Laqad jita shay'an ajaba. You came with something amazing. Kurrasa, a little booklet. Tadammanat maqasid al ihya. It included all the objectives of the Ihya of Ulum al-Din by Ghazali. وَزَادَتْ عَلَيْهِ And it added more than the Ihya had. يعني الغ... The Ihya of Imam Ghazali is five volumes this big, right? In the new print. Even in the old print. He says in this, you have gotten all the maqasad, all the objectives of Al-Ihya by Al-Ghazali. And then you added things that were not there. al ihya remember, was revival. And therefore, we're going to talk about this hikam and what the hikam is talking about. But the whole hikam of Ibn Ata and the whole book of Al-Ghazali, but specifically the hikam of Ibn Ata, rahimahullah, is all based on one surah in the Qur'an, Al-Fatiha. <coughs> Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil Alameen. Al-Rahman. Al-Rahim. Malik. Maliki Yawm al-Din. Iyaka na'bud. Wa iyaka nasta'in. Ihdina. اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين No wonder الشيخ الأكبر رحمه الله محي الدين العربي used to say and others also that الفاتحة is ورد العارفين It's not called فاتحة the opening for no reason. Nor is it chaotically or circumstantially that Allah made it obligatory upon you to read in every salah. It's not without a purpose. The whole hikam is about the Fatiha. The whole tazkiyah is about the Fatiha. And therefore, when we talk about tazkiyah, which we will inshallah in a little bit, let me just take talk about the hikam. The hikam talk about three things, basically. Number one, an nafsul bashariyah, the human nafs. This mysterious thing that is that we call nafs, our nafs, that we don't know how to treat our nafs. Our nafs plays tricks sometimes on you, tells you things. And that's why in the old Sufis used to, many times, many of the old Sufis in the old days, they used to say, or oh, people of Tazkiyah, some people have sensitivities with the word Sufi, which is an innovated term, just like the word Aqidah is an innovated term. We use the word Ihsan and Tazkiyah, I have no problem with that. I don't, 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 don't she. But they used to say that there is a hadith, it's not a hadith really. But they used to say, Man arafa nafsah, فَقَدْ عَرَفَ رَبَّهُ They used to say, whoever, if you know yourself, you know your Lord. It's not a prophetic hadith. And if you understand it the right way, it may be correct. Meaning, if you know who you are, 
you really know that you're created by the Creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You would know, if you know your limitation, you know that there is someone there that does not have these limitations that created you. What that means is a knowledgeable scholar knows what he doesn't know. Let me repeat it again. A person of knowledge, the most important thing a person of knowledge knows that that which he doesn't know. I know what I don't know. Not what I can repeat. And that separates, obviously, knowledge from information. Why is, why is the test... Why is the nafs Can I do it without a microphone? There's only one option. All phones open public. Because it doesn't, it, you won't benefit much. I mean, with all these screaming. And Tezkiah requires no screaming. It requires understanding. So, the first access of the hikam of Ibn Atah rahimahullah ta'ala was the human nafs. Why? We need to know what this nafs is all about. If you know who you are, you might then figure out how you really can sort of live with yourself and make the best out of it. The nafs is the one that requires or needs tazkiyah, whether it tells you it does or doesn't tell you it does. Tazkiyah means purification, polishing, <coughs> transparency. You take this and you polish it so it becomes a better, a better mirror, transparent mirror. So first is sort of preparing the nafs to be polished, to be transparent, to be purified. The second focus of the ilm of tazkiyah is the objective of tazkiyah. Allah. The maqsood of shuhud. The one who you want to witness. Didn't the Prophet Sallallahu say in defining Ihsan that you worship Allah as if you are seeing Him? Isn't that the objective? Well, you have to first make sure that your apparatus is clean because the presence of Allah does not accept impurities, meaning spiritual impurities. So first you work on the nafs then the focus is who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how do we get to know him? And then the third is the connection between the nafs and its creator. How do we walk that path? And all that we said can be summarized in Surah Al-Fatiha really. All of it. And if you want to even take it smaller than that, even less than just Surah Al-Fatiha, it's all in Iyaka Na'bud wa Iyaka Nasta'een. All. Why? Iyaka Na'bud is Ikhlas.
Ikhlas means what? What do you mean by Ikhlas? What is Ikhlas? Sincerity, selflessness, transparency, purification, all of them. What do you mean? You worship Allah with Ikhlas. What does that mean? Sincerely, selflessly, transparently. What do you mean transparently? It means what you told him that I believe you actually act. It means what you have in your heart is what's on your mouth. It means what you believe is what you do. Transparency. That's why Allah Ta'ala says, Afwan al Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says in the authentic hadith of Sahih Muslim, Hadith Tamim bin Aus al-Dari, he says, Qala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ad-Deen al Nasiha. Ad-Deen is what? Nasiha. Is Nasiha advice? Of course not. What is Nasiha? Transparency. Transparency. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam makes the whole deen. A deen, the whole deen is Nasiha, transparency. When some people translated Nasiha as advice, why? Why do we use Transparency for advice, because when you go ask someone for advice, what are you asking for? Transparency. Give me the best that you think. You're asking for transparency. That's what you're asking for. But Al Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa ashabi wa azwaj sallam makes the whole deen a deen an nasiha. Qalu liman ya Rasulullah. They said, to whom, O Prophet of Allah? Nasiha to whom? They also thought maybe, which, which meaning of nasiha are we using here? Qala lillah. Nasiha to Allah. Does Allah need advice? Does Allah need your advice? Nasiha to Allah means what? Transparency with Allah. Transparency with Allah. To whom then? Qala li rasulih. To his messenger as well. What do you mean nasiha with his messenger? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It means his sunnah is there, what he told you. You say, Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. That means he's your imam and he's your leader and he's your teacher. How come you prioritize other, others over him? How come you prioritize other teachings over him? How come you prioritize other sunan over his? How come you prioritize other nawafil over his? Didn't you say, Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah? Addinu nasiha to whom? Li Rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And then, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Li a'immati al-Muslimina wa a'ammatihim. To all the Muslims and everyone, transparency. That's the whole deen. Iyaka na'bud is transparency with Allah. Ikhlas. How so? You, ya Allah, is whom I worship. You I worship. Iya kanabud means you I worship. Nothing between you and him. You're saying to Allah, Iyaka, you I worship. Is there anything between you and him? Hmm? You Iyaka, Ya Allah, you I worship. Is that ikhlas or not ikhlas? Ikhlas, if you make sure you don't put anything in the middle between you and him. Ikhlas, when you realize or when you believe that you don't worship anything other than him, you don't associate anything other than him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, with him. You, ya Allah, all worship is due to you. Absolute ikhlas. So, iyyaka na'bud is ikhlas. Iyyaka nasta'een is the secret of ikhlas. Iyya kanabud is ikhlas. But you need the secret to ikhlas. What's the secret to ikhlas? Iyya kanasta'in. What do you mean Iyya kanasta'in? It means, Ya Allah, 
Y you I worship, but I don't see my worship. I seek you. I need your help. Because without your help, I cannot do iyakanabud. I am nothing. I don't see what I do. Even the iyakanabud, even the ibadah that I do, it is because iyakanastain. It is because you graced me with the honor to make me stand before you. It is you who opened for me the iyakanabud. The iyakanastain is the secret of the iyakanabud. If it wasn't for you, Ya Allah, I could have been standing and praying all my life. But no ikhlas and no transparency. So it is iyyaka nasta'in. So I have ikhlas. So I can do iyyaka na'bud. And that's why the whole surah begins with Bismillah. Hmm? Right or not? In the name of Allah, I begin my journey to Him. Bismillah, in the name of Allah, I walk to him. Bismillah, in the name of Allah, I work. In the name of Allah, I talk. In the name, Bismillah, in the name of Allah, I do. In the name of Allah, I move. In the name of Allah, I pray. In the name of Allah, I thank him for allowing me to pray. Al hikam is a plural of hikmah, which means what? <coughs> Wisdom. Ilm and wisdom are two different things. You may have ilm but no wisdom. Usually wisdom comes after ilm. Al Quran always puts wisdom when he puts them together, leaves wisdom till the end. Before, he puts ilm before. Ilm leads to wisdom. But not necessarily the same. That's why people may memorize information or have actual ilm but no wisdom. <coughs> and Allah says, وَمَنْ يُؤْتَ الْحِكْمَةَ فَقَدْ يُؤْتِيَ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا The hikam, which is what we're studying, is a plural of hikmah. Hikmah means wisdom. And wisdom is the utterance of the one who knows with the reality of things as it is. In other words, wisdom is the expression of the knower about the situation that's known to him. That's wisdom. For the one who speaks about issue that's not known to him is a fool. So Ibn Atala put the wisdom because wisdom is not just talking the talk. Wisdom is what? Experiential. Huh? It's experiential. I read a couple of booklets. Now I'm ready. Ajib. Mizwa. <laughs> And there's talk. They both have to make, be there. So he wrote this wisdom through his experience in the travel to Allah. And then he, towards the end, he put some advices now, in meaning counseling us. Some nasiha. And then he sealed his little booklet with munajat. Munajat means speaking to Allah. So he... As he put the wisdom now, how to go to Allah, how to purify yourself, how to focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how to go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he gave advices. Then at the end, he sealed his book with his talking to Allah. Because preparing to meet him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Didn't Allah say, to his messenger, فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ Once you're done, once you're done, what do you do? فَرْغَبْ وَإِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ 
فإذا فرغت عفوا فانصب وإلى ربك فرغب فإذا فرغت once you're done فانصب stand up now speak to your Lord وإلى ربك and to your Lord you ought to have that desire what is this whole hikam about then? it sort of shows you the foundations or the rules of journeying to Allah the etiquettes, adab of suluk, of walking, of journeying, of the spiritual journey. The etiquettes of companionship. We all have companionship of each other. What's the etiquette of that? The reality of the nafs, of the human nafs. The methodologies of illumination after education. The spiritual stations on the path. And obviously, the end of the journey which is supposed to be with Allah Ta'ala and illumination. With that, let's go back now to the point that this whole thing is about tazkiyah. All right. You remember Al-Khalil alayhi salam, Sayyidina Ibrahim, one of the big, highest ranking anbiya and rusul Allah Ta'ala created. You all know that not every Nabi is Rasul, but every Rasul is Nabi. Because a Rasul is given a new rules, new book, new rules to give, new Risala. Nabi revives the Risala of the Rasul before him. Right? Now we don't want to go into Rasul business here, but in general. Allah Ta'ala tells us about Ibrahim al-Khalil alayhi salatu wassalam. You all remember when Ibrahim went to Mecca. Mecca at that time was a valley with no water. غَيْرِ ذِي زَرْعِ Allah says, which means there's no greenery. It means there's no water. There's no life. And he leaves his family there. Our mother, Hajar, alayhi salam, and our father, Ismail, alayhi salatu wassalam. Baby, still infant. Anbiya don't do things chaotically. Anbiya don't say things chaotically with just from nowhere. If Allah says about the Prophet sallallahu alaihi doesn't say anything without help from his own. In huwa illa wahyun yuha. Sayyidina Ibrahim Khalil is also an Abiyya and Rasul bin Ulil Azm. So he he leaves them there, and what does he do in the Quran? He, the dua, he says, Rabbi inni askantu min dhurriyati biwadin ghayri dhi zar'in inda baytika al-muharram. Ya Allah, I left my offspring, my family, the meaning of the ayah, right at your Kaaba. Hasn't been built yet. There was nothing yet. But he knows where it is. Rabbana liyuqimu salah. So that they establish the salah. Ajib, how do you know they will establish the salah? Oh, he knows that they will live. Otherwise, he says, Ya Allah, give them. Why didn't he say, Ya Allah, give them water and give them means of life? Well, he says, no, the salah is the important one. لِيُقِيمُ salah. Not only that. He says, فَجْعَلْ أَفْئِدَةً مِنَ النَّاسِ Ya Allah, make the hearts of people. How does Ibrahim know that there will be people? that will come and see them. Not just one person, nas, people. Tahwi ilayhim. When they see them, their, the hearts of people fall in love towards them. He put them there. He comes back and forth, you all know, and many of the ulama of Sirah, they say he used to use the buraq. So it's not the first time that Al-Buraq was used necessarily with our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Some of the ulama sirah, they said, Sayyidina Ibrahim Al-Khalil used to use Al-Buraq to come from where he was, quick, light speed, to Mecca, goes back, no problem. Huh? I always say, the Buraq or light speed is used by the Anbiya to slow down their speed, not to increase it. <laughs> by definition. Which distance is greater, Mecca to Bayt al-Maqdis or, Mac or Bayt al-Maqdis to heavens? 
Which one? The one to heavens. The Mi'raj is much, much more distance than the Isra, isn't it? So how come the Burak was not in the Mi'raj, was only in the Isra? Huh? Well, you think the nur of the Prophet ﷺ is like the nur of the Burak? Give me a break. I mean, you've got issues then if you think that. <laughs> you need to think about things in a different way. Nur al Nubuwa is much more honorable than al Burak. The speed of Nabuwa is much higher than the Burak. What are you talking about? What is Burak? Burak is a light. Speed of light is only 186,000 miles per second. No big deal. No big deal. Nabuwa is something. Light? You've got many stars there. Send light all the time. How many Nabis do you have and how many Rasuls do you have? That's a different story. And that's why if you pay attention to stars and you lose sight of the biggest one, That's where the Quran tells you, by the falling star. Your star never falls. By the star when it falls, right? Surah Al-Najm. Your friend is not does not deviate, does not fall. What is the relation between the star and, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Well, if you haven't find, found the big star then, then you are really in trouble. Because that small star in the sky or that massive star of the sky may fall off of its orbit and deviate from it and falls. But the star on earth will never swerve off of its orbit nor will he ever fall so if the light of the star of the sky is shut or is put off the light of the star on earth is never off who is lighting who now who is the guide to who more than Allah says alamatin wabin najmi hum wabin najmi hum they are guided by the star. Didn't Allah say that for Quran Karim? Which star depending? North star? Everybody has their own stars. I'm just saying. When Al Khalil Salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi wa alayhi. And sometimes we're living in such a dunya that everything in this dunya is cow the veils become so thick. And when we get all busy in the dunya, the the veils are thicker and thicker and thicker and we think that's all, all we see is a veil. We live in this whole thing called dunya and we think dunya is so free, it's a jail, ya habibi. It's like you're sitting in a prison system, nice big prison system. I don't know if it's nice, but it's a big prison system. So big that there are rivers in it and there are oceans in it and there are mountains in it. And, you know, and because all inmates, it's a max, maximum security, by the way. Well, there's no way out. But because inmates or everybody who is born into this prison, inmates grow up thinking that this is all there is. Because that's all they saw. Even though history is ripe with escape attempts, and rife with all these stories of how to escape. But that escape can only be through light. And though that light are the prophets that Allah Ta'ala sent people with. Al-Khalil alayhi salatu wasalam comes and he is building the Kaaba. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa idh yarfa'u Ibrahim al-qawa'ida min al-bayti wa Ismail. Both prophets and both messengers. Both are building the house of Allah. They're not... Imagine that you're building, you're building a house of Allah with your father or with your grandfather. You say, what a blessing. Or with a sheikh, with Sheikh Riyadh. You say, Sheikh Riyadh, can you come please help us build the masjid? You say, subhanAllah, I built it with the sheikh. You know, what a great honor, you know. You have not just two Nabis, two Rasuls, together at the same time. Ismail is Nabi on Rasul, wa Ibrahim is Nabi on Rasul. Both. Ajib that both of them are Rasul. 
And what are they doing? They're building just a masjid down the street. They're building the Kaaba, the house of Allah, the, the most honor. Inna awwala bayti wudi alin nas, lalladhi bibakkata mubaraka. They're building the house of Allah there. They build, wa idhi arfa'u Ibrahimu al-qawaida min al-bayti wa Ismail, they built the house and finished the house. The first thing they did, what did they say? Alhamdulillah. They're worried that their deed may, you know, what do we do? Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta samiyun. Ya Allah, please accept from us. That's tazkiyah. Do we understand tazkiyah? You're building the Kaaba, not just any masjid, not just doing something good. The Kaaba of Allah on earth, and both of you are anbiya and rusul. Rabbana taqabbal minna. Because sometimes I'm saying these things because sometimes we do one good thing and we, f we think, you know, now uh, hey, everybody owes me. Then, uh, then they say both, Rabbana wa ba'athfihim. Then they say, Rabbana wa ja'alna muslimayni lak. Ya Allah, make us Muslims to you. Muslim again here in the sense of verb. Ya Allah, make us amongst those who submit to you. They're making dua, both of them. How much are you going to fight? You keep fighting? Allah wants you to do this, and I want to do this. Fight. You think you're going to win that fight? There's no fight anyway. It's perception. Anta turid wa ana urid. You want and I want, my slave. Walain yakunu illa ma urid, but nothing will happen except what I want. Rabbana wa ja'alna muslimayn lak. How many of you, how many of us make that dua? Ya Allah, make us Muslims to you. I'm saying this, again, this is Tazkir. So you don't take this for granted. Many people think Islam is a birth-given right. It's a privilege that must be maintained, my dear beloved. A privilege that must be maintained. And that's why the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us Sahih al-Bukhari hadith that there will be time where people lose their iman. In the morning they have iman, in the evening they lose all their iman. Yusbih mu'minan wa yumsi kafira. And some people will be in the evening have iman. When the morning comes, they lost all their faith. Why do you think the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the, in the hadith Sahih he says, Ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qalbi ala deenik. Oh, one who... Turns the hearts in which ways that you want. Ya Allah, make my heart firm on your deen. People take faith for granted. You know why? Because they reduced faith to words. But Allah said what? Who Allah affirms? You thabbitu Allahu ladhina? Amanu. Bil qawli thabiti wal? Fil fil في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة يثبت الله الذين آمنوا بالقول الثابت الله affirms those who truly believe huh? well, for a reason not only that look at what Ibrahim and Ismail both رسول while building the Kaaba ربنا وجعلنا مسلمين لك يا الله make us Muslims to you not only that what do they say ومن ذريتنا and make our offsprings Muslims to you. Allah. How many parents, those of you are parents, you make dua, Ya Allah, make my offspring Muslims to you. Not in the name. Muslims here in the action of verb. Sequential and more, and more improving and higher submission to Allah. More submission and more submission and more submission and more submission so that there's nothing left of you except submission, except Muslim. That's when you are a complete Muslim in the sense of total submission. Tazkiyah sense. That's why we're some of our shaykh, we used to ask him, we used to say, should we go here or there? Ala muradillah, whatever Allah wants. As if they, as practice, they want to deny their own will. Uh, 
I'm saying this for us, for us, all of us are parents, or most, many of us, some of us are not parents, but many of us are parents. رَبَّنَا وَجَعَلْنَا مُسْلِمَيْنِ لَكَ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِنَا أُمَّةً مُسْلِمَةً لَكَ Ya Allah, make us, ja'al, not make us just say, make us act as Muslims. And make our children act as Muslims. Wa'arina manasikana. Ya Allah, show us our manasik. And then what do they say, Ibrahim, Ismail, alayhim as La ilaha illallah. Wa tub alayna. And please forgive us, give us, grant us repentance. What did you do? You're just building the Kaaba. Ya Allah, we ask you to grant us tawbah. I'm saying these things because this is the line of tazkiyah of the Anbiya alayhim as rahim That's when we come to the topic we have. And then they said, وَبَعَثْ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْهُمْ Now they're talking about their offspring as well, right? They said, Ya Allah, send our offspring that will be here. Look, look how, huh? that how they know. They will be here, offspring, and they're making dua. And so you don't think that Sayyidina Ibrahim abandoned his children like that. La, la, that's not Wabath fihim, Ya Allah, send our offspring a messenger, Rasul. They didn't even say Nabi, notice like that. Look at that. Shuf maqamu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Sayyidina Ibrahim, doesn't Sayyidina Ibrahim know? He knows. But out of honoring, he doesn't say, Wabath fihim nabiyan minhum. Wabath fihim rasulan. Rasul, send them Rasul. وَبْعَثْ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْهُمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِكَ Send them, Ya Allah, a messenger from amongst them who recites your ayah unto them. So, now Ibrahim and Ismail are defining the job of messengers. Number one, يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِكَ Then what? وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابِ First is tilawa of the Qur'an, or the ayat. Then, ilm of the kitab. It seems that the Qur'an is distinguishing between a qari and a alim. Oftentimes we don't, obviously, because whatever. يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهَمْ آيَاتِكَ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمْ الْكِتَابِ Okay, what else? وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمْ الْكِتَابَ وَال... He teaches them hikmah as well. They need to be taught wisdom, Ya Allah. So he teaches them not just, he recites first thing, the ayahs. Your ayahs on them. Number two, he teaches them the book. Number three, he teaches them what? Wisdom. Allah. How do you learn wisdom, Ya Akhi? And that's what they said, Suhba. Why do we call the Sahaba, Sahaba? That's Suhba, that's how you learn wisdom. That Khidma, that's how you learn wisdom. Tayyip. Right? وَيُعَلِّمُهُمْ الْكِتَابِ So يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِكَ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمْ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ What's the first, what's the fourth function? وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ And he teaches them tazkiyah, purification of the nafs, of the heart. إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ Very nice. That's the dua of two, two prophets, two messengers at the Kaaba. While they finish the Kaaba and building the Kaaba. I mean, we go to the Kaaba and now we say, you know, Please make dua for me at the Kaaba because your dua there is mustajab. Even us who are loaded, someone like me, loaded with sins, right? Imagine the prophets alayhim salatu salam and after they built the Kaaba themselves, is their dua mustajab? Allah. Oh, if, if al-Khalil alayhi salam dua is not mustajab, whose dua is? You have al-Khalil and you have al-Dabih. Ismail alayhi salam, the one who was sacrificed, and you have Ibrahim al-Khalil, Khalilullah. Allah answered their dua, obviously. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Huwa al-ladhi ba'atha fi al-ummiyyin rasoolan minhum. So the Quran comes right away consistent. He is the one who sent to the ummiyyin. People, ummiyyin means from Ummu al-Qura. Means the Meccans. He sent to the Meccans. Rasoolan minhum. He didn't say Nabiyyan minhum. Rasoolan minhum. Obviously they know he's Rasool. Number one. But now Allah is saying, now Allah accepted the dua of Ibrahim and Ismail, but it seems that Allah prioritized the dua differently. Not like Ibrahim and Ismail, though they, one is Khalil, one is Dabih. Not how they asked Allah. Huwa alladhi ba'atha fil ummiyina rasoolan minhum. He sent to the Meccans rasool from amongst them. Number one, yatlu alayhim ayatih. He recites his ayahs on them. 
وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابُ وَالْحِكْمَةِ He puts tazkiyah right after the tilawa, right before the ilm of the kitab and before the hikmah. It seems that Al-Quran Kareem or Allah Ta'ala prioritized tazkiyah before ilm. Before ilm. Purification of the heart before ilm of the kitab. Before ilm of the kitab and before hikmah. And ilm obviously is before hikmah. Notice how ilm comes always before hikmah. You shouldn't wonder about that because you've read Surah Ar-Rahman. Ar-Rahman, Allam. Which one came first? Allah could have said Al-Alim. Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Al-Alim, Allam Al-Quran. Isn't his name Al-Alim? Yes or no? Why he said Ar-Rahman? Ishara for you to have tazkiyah. Because if you don't have tazkiyah of the heart, then no man, no, how can you learn? How can you have Allam al-Quran? How can you have that ilm? How can the knowledge come without any tazkiyah? That's why Al-Quran al-Kareem says, هُوَ الَّذِي بَعْثَ فِي الْأُمِّينَ رَسُولًا مِنْهُمْ يَتْلُوْ عَلَيْهَمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ So while Ibrahim and Ismail put tazkiyah number four, Allah Ta'ala put tazkiyah number two. That's why. Ilm with no tazkiyah, is Salah with no Fatiha? Is Muqtadi with no Imam? The Tazkiyah is the Imam of Ilm. Let me repeat it again. The Tazkiyah is the Imam of Ilm. And Ilm with no Tazkiyah or purification of the heart is Imamless. Tazkiyah is the guide of Ilm. Otherwise, without Tazkiyah, Ilm becomes dangerous. Dangerous. It doesn't only self-harm, it harms others as well. Alright. You all know the hadith. Hadith Jibreel, that is known. Right? Al-Bukhari, rahimahullah, al-Imam, Abu Abdullah. He narrated in his sahih. The hadith is very known on the authority of Abu Huraira, radiyallahu anhu. He says, كان النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم بارزا يوما للناس فأتاه رجل فقال ما الإيمان One time the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was there in the masjid A man comes to him He says what is إيمان He says الإيمان أن تؤمن بالله وملائكته وبلقائه لفظ البخاري ورسله وتؤمن بالبعث You believe in الإيمان is you believe in Allah, you believe in the angels, you believe in the day of judgment, you will meet him, you believe in the angels, you believe in resurrection. Shuf. Very nice. Qala mal Islam. He says, What is Islam? Qala al Islam and Ta'bud Allah wa la tushrika bihi shay'a wa tuqeem as salah wa tu'ti as zakah al mafruda wa tasum ramadan. Zakah is these things. Afwan, uh, Islam is this. Qala mal ihsan. He tells him, then what is Ihsan? Then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells him, Al-Ihsan an ta'bud Allah ka'annaka tarah. Ihsan is that you worship Allah as if you are seeing Him. فَإِن لَمْ تَكُنْ تَرَاهُ فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاكُ If you are not seeing Him, He is seeing you. Then when he left, he says, هَذَا جِبْرِيلُ And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, هَذَا جِبْرِيلُ جَاءَ يُعَلِّمُ النَّاسَ دِينَهُمْ Jibreel came to teach people their deen. How did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam make the deen? Islam, Iman, and? That's why those who want to eliminate Ihsan out of the deen, they're really having an incomplete deen. Because deen is Islam and Iman and Ihsan, not just Islam and Iman. But what is Ihsan? What is Ihsan again? Huh? That you worship Allah as if you are? If you are not seeing Him, He is seeing you. Ihsan is what Tazkiyah is. 
same words used by the Quran and the Sunnah and a word, another term for it that the scholars innovated is called Tasawwuf. Tasawwuf to us means Ihsan or Tazkiyah as Quranically defined and as prophetically defined. Ihsan is what again? What's the definition of Ihsan? That you worship Allah as? You, first of all, that you worship. There is worship. And who do you worship? Allah. Is that Ikhlas or not? No. You don't worship any other than Allah. First of all, is that Ihsan is that you worship Allah as if you are? Seeing. Wait, wait, why are you rushing? As if you are? <coughs> Seeing. Do you see or you're just blindly walking? Ihsan is that you worship Allah as if you're seeing Him. You're not going to see Him, but as if you are seeing. You're not walking blindly. You're following Rasulullah That's why it's as if you are seeing Him. Because if you follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, khayrul hadi hadyu, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that is as if you are seeing Allah. You're going, you're worshipping Allah as if you are seeing Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because that path of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is worshipping Allah as if seeing Him. Though you won't see Him, لا تدركه الأبصار. وهو يدركه الأبصار. Ihsan is worshipping Allah as if you are... Seeing. Seeing who? Seeing the dunya? Seeing the universe? Seeing every other creation? Seeing yourself? Seeing your own worship? Seeing what you do? The things that you do are so great in your eyes? You worship him, Ihsan is worshipping him as what? As if you are seeing who? Seeing him, is there anything other than him? No. Seeing who? Allah. Well, it's all about who's who. Who's who? Who is who? Who is who is the whole thing? Allahu la ilaha illa. Who? Ihsan is all about who is who. If you figured out who is who, you've got it. If you haven't, you need to look at who is who. Ihsan is that you worship him as if you're seeing him. All right, so let me just explain this so we don't have to go th tomorrow through it. And you need to tell me, or the organizers need to tell me when the time is up. So you have the fiqh. First you have imaniyat or aqidah. Aqidah is also an innovative term. Yani mustalah mubtada'. Let me use the Arabic word. That does not exist in the book nor the sunnah. In the book and the sunnah we have iman, imaniyat, iman, you know, these masail of iman. But anyway, so the term of aqidah, let's say, tells you about who to worship, correct? Who you worship? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The term fiqh. Also, the usage of the term fiqh is innovated because fiqh in the Arabic language and in the prophetic hadith means knowledge, understanding. Right? Alright. Fiqh means what? How to worship. Aqidah means who to worship. Fiqh is what? How to worship. Ihsan, tazkiyah, or tasawwuf is acceptability. Do you know that Allah accepts? Who knows that Allah accepts? Eligibility. Eligibility. You're rushing. <laughs> You're rushing. Is my technically valid deed that I did according to the rules, it's technically valid. Is it accepted to Allah? From technical validity to acceptability. But since nobody knows acceptability, the best thing we can do is what? 
try to work it so we are eligible for acceptability because only Allah knows acceptability. What does that mean? What do we, what do we, how do people judge religious today? Technical validity. Even people want to tell you, if you're religious, do you pray? Alhamdulillah, mashallah, very nice. What are you doing? Oh, you don't know how to pray? Learn how to pray. Pray like this. Okay, I learned how to pray. Now you pray. Oh, mashallah, you're a good religious man. Religious woman, mashallah, you're doing this. What are they busy occupying you with? The means, not the objective. You want to know if you're really religious? That technically valid salah that you're doing, that you've been doing for years, did it make you stop saying evil? And doing evil? That technically valid zakah that you're doing, did it make you a fair person with those you don't like? Not with those you like. Did it bring you to justice within yourself? That fair dhikr that you're doing or whatever the ilm that you're learning. Did it polish your nafs from its greed, envy, and unreasonable uh, aggression or aggression? Not, there's no unreasonable. All aggression is unreasonable. Or did it not? The maqsad of the ibadat, the objective of all the technically valid worship that you're doing, did you reach your final destination or you're still busying yourself in trying to make your deeds technically valid, fooling yourself that the technical validity means acceptability automatically and means that you have reached your final destination, which is Ihsan, that you're worshipping him now as if you're seeing him. You're actually worshipping him as if you're seeing your deed possibly. So that's why you say to people, for example, give, he says, look, Sheikh, I gave last month, alhamdulillah, there was a fundraiser for, you know, the people in uh, Myanmar or Rohingya or whatever, you know, alhamdulillah, Allah enabled me to give. I did not ask you what you gave last month. You want to give now or not? You know, you don't have to, I, that's between you and Allah Ta'ala. I've been praying the whole time, I mean, you know. You st people start seeing their worship. Their own worship is, is seen by them. Versus once you move from technical validity, from technical validity now to Ihsan and Tazkiyah, you are now no longer seeing the deed that you technically perfected. Because now you're not looking at the technical, technically perfect deed that you've mastered. And learned because that was a tool to get you to be closer to Allah in the first place and that your deed is acceptable to Allah the sign of that acceptance is a transformation in you have you changed Allah says in the salat tanha anil fahshai wal munkar salah stops you from fahsha at least gradually is it stopping you or not not pray all you want to pray. You won't be judged on not praying. But have you really gained the fruits of prayer? Have you really reached the objective of your salah? That's the whole point of tazkiyah. And that's the aim that's dropped. Today all we focus is and we occupy everything in how to master the tech, how to technically master a deed to make it technically valid. Because, you see, the aqidah is a matter of the mind. Right? You believe in your mind, re reason things. The ahkam or the fiqh is matters of the jawarih. You do this with your hand, you do this with your salah, you go like this, you abstain from food and drinks. Tazkiyah is a matter of the hearts. It's not outward, nor is it intel intelligent only or intellect only. It's now hearts. And since we said the hearts are not important anyway, let's just worry about the outward. We've, went, we've gone in excess of mastering the outward. 
but neglected than the last thing which the Prophet وسلم, is an ihsan and ta'bud Allah ka'annaka as if you are. So where did we stop? Ihsan and ta'bud Allah. Ihsan is that you worship Him. In fact, some people stopped at Ihsan is that you worship. Hmm? Why are you stopping here? It's like you're saying, You have to continue the ayah. Ihsan is not just you worship, but you worship Him. And not just you worship Him. If you want to know how you really worship Him, it is then as if you are seeing Him. All right, is our time up, Sheikh? I don't need to keep you here, otherwise then defeats the purpose. طبعا the madhab of Imam al-Bukhari was that Islam and Iman was one thing. لكن the hadith actually, the Quran in general, shows a different things. Meaning, showing that outward deeds can be done by a munafiq and a kafir. Inward can't. Inward can't. Hmm? Because Allah talks about وَلَمَّ يَدْخُلِ الْإِيمَانِ Iman did not come into your heart. You only have Islam. You're doing outward deed. But the Iman, the, in, the inward is not there. The complete deen, which is Islam, Iman, and Ihsan, can only be done by a believer. The outward form can be done by anybody. The point is not to do a technical deed only. But the point is to believe and connect, and purify, and polish, and become transparent with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why the hadith in Sahih al-Imam Muslim, where the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said what? In Allah la yanzuru ila suwarikum, wa la ila ajsadikum, wa lakin yanzuru ila qulubikum. Allah does not look at your forms and at your bodies, but He looks at your hearts. So all these things are leading you to the last where you're supposed to sort of work on your heart so it becomes more polished, more transparent with Allah. You become more refined with Allah, refined with the creation of Allah. It doesn't mean you're not going to make mistakes. You will. But you're on the progress of refinement. You become so refined until you become as Allah said, وَلَكِنْ كُونُوا رَبَّانِيِّينَ You become Rabbani. Now the Fatiha has a different paint, paint job then. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim is not that you say, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. No, 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 no. Bismillah. In His name I start. In His name I talk. In His name I walk. In His name I breathe. In His name I study. In His name I work. In His name. Not just a lip service in His name, but a reality in His name, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh, different story. Different story. Let me tell you this and then these couple of a hadith or at least one hadith and then we'll stop. Sayyidina uh, Abu Dharr al-Ghafari radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. Al-Bukhari narrates this hadith in his tarikh. Well, it's not sahih. We're saying it's not Sahih because it's in Tariq al-Bukhari, not Sahih al-Bukhari. Huh? Sahih al-Bukhari is Sahih. Like in Tariq al-Imam al-Bukhari, well, it's not Sahih. In his Tariq al-Kabir al-Bukhari narrates on an, in an authentic sanad to Sayyidina Abi Dharr al-Ghafari. Jundub is his name. This is what... Say, well, remember, again, I'm, when I'm saying Abu Dharr al-Ghafari, you're saying, you're thinking what? What are you thinking? Early in the Meccan phase. Early in the Meccan phase, when Islam was few people, few people, handful, that's when Abu Dhar was became embraced Islam. So early, early, early people, and he got to live long. Alhamdulillah. What does Sayyidina Abu Dhar al Ghafari says? Now let me take you to see what Sayyidina Abu Dhar back in the old days in Mecca. What was he saying? قال كنا على عهد النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم 
Vilmanan Hazawira. He says, at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we were young people. Ta'allamna al-Iman qabla an nata'allam al-Qur'an. We learned, ta'allamna, not memorized, no, we learned. Ta'allamna al-Iman, we learned Iman before we learned Qur'an. Thumma ta'allamna al-Qur'an, fazdadna bihi imana. Then when the Qur'an was revealed and we learned the Qur'an, our Iman started increasing with the Qur'an. Obviously, you know, we don't do these things anymore. We always try to switch rules around because we think we know it better. What does that mean? What is he trying to tell you? We learned Iman before we learned Qur'an. What is he telling you? That by reading, even by reading the Qur'an, you don't necessarily get Iman. Let me repeat it again, I know. Even by reading the book of Allah, you won't necessarily get Iman. Allah says, Inna <laughs> To the ones who has a qalb, the one who doesn't have a qalb, you can read it all, all day, no problem. He's not going to listen to it. If there is a heart present, yes. If there is no heart, لِمَنْ أَلْقَى السَّمْعَ وَهُوَ شَهِيدٌ أَلْقَى السَّمْعَ Not just heard. Alright, so you understand what I'm saying here. So if you don't necessarily get iman from reading the book of Allah, Necessarily, I'm saying, not necessarily. Only. From reading the book of Allah, only. Do you think by reading human written books, you're going to get Iman? Most of people do that. Human written books, and he thinks he's got Iman. That's where the Sunnah of Rasulullah in actual life comes. Rather than Snippets that we memorize and we regurgitate to people. Rather than fragments or paragraphs that we just memorize and we just impress others with. That's why we called the Sahaba Sahaba again. <laughs> Abu Dhar was there, Quran was just little few revealed. Was he, did he learn Iman? How? Suhba? Khidma? Servitude? Servitude. Why am I saying servitude? Lots of people turn this religion into a thrill. They want to get a thrill so they can, you know, let me, uh, even when we want to teach, let's make it a thrill. Ah, baby, I always say, if you want a thrill, there's here in Cape Town, go skydiving. Get some thrill and then come and do servitude here. Servitude. Selfless servitude. Our Mashaykh have always said, those who walk the journey must sacrifice. Don't be fooled by those who, the cheerleaders on the side who don't, who just tell you, oh, you're doing great and they're not going anywhere. Everyone loses out of their own time. Don't worry about that. Those who walk have to sacrifice. Those who master the path suffer, not sacrifice. Those who actually walk, what do you mean sacrifice? Until it's painful. So one day used to say that, yani in the old days, the Salaf, that when you give, you have given. They said when it begins to hurt, you're giving out so much that it's not, now it's beginning to hurt. They said that's the beginning, that now you started giving actually. You started giving. Now you don't want to give to hurt. What do you mean give to hurt? It hurts to give now. Not, gives to, not, not give until it hurts. Now it hurts to give. <laughs> Even when he's dying, you want to open the hand by, for, by force. But it's your time. The most precious thing Allah gave you is the time after Iman. The most precious thing Allah gave you after Iman is time. Don't be a spectator. Allah says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wal-Asr. 
Innal insana lafi You lose if you waste your time. Don't worry about people. Don't worry about me or others or any about anybody else, any figure, anybody. It makes no difference. The end of the day, your journey is you and Allah. Choose well. Choose well. That's why the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam hadith. You know hadith al Tirmidhi. Well, hadith also came in Sahih al Bukhari and different things. He says, "An Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam, al Rajul ala dini khalile." The man is on the religion of his co company that he keeps. What, com what kind of company you keep? فَلْيَنظُرْ أَحَدُكُمْ مَنْ يُخَالِلْ Means, see what the company you keep, that's what it is. Don't say, I have a lot of iman, I can be in any company, I can still hold it. No matter who you are, that company will affect you. Choose wisely. Allah. And these are the asrar of the suhba, obviously. I think we should stop here because we went over time. And I haven't really finished my intro to Tazkiyah yet, but tomorrow, inshallah, if Allah gives us time, we will try to because Tazkiyah is a lot. Tazkiyah is a life long course. It's at the end of the day, like I said, you and Allah. So check yourself. With him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi wa rabbil alameen.